Hi, I'm Cody, the editor of Nullbyte, the section of Wonder How To that teaches about cybersecurity, ethical hacking, and computer science. Today, we're going to continue our section on cyber weapons, which is going to be a section that kind of focuses on the various weapons of war that are actually used in cyber conflicts around the world by cyber warriors, pen testers, and hackers worldwide. So today, we're going to get into Wi-Fi, the kind of elements behind hacking Wi-Fi, and specifically, the way that choosing a poor password can make it very trivial for any hacker or really any even child with a computer and the ability to use a wireless network adapter like this to break into a wireless network that has a poor password. So normally sitting behind a computer and attempting to guess the password would be a pretty inefficient way of trying to break in. But there's a flaw in the way that Wi-Fi has to communicate in order to establish a secure connection that actually makes it fairly easy to break in. So, a wireless network like this is capable of two different things, packet injection and uh, monitor mode. So monitor mode means the ability to listen to a whole bunch of networks all around you instead of just listening in on one, the way that you might have a conversation with one person in a room that's full of people all having various conversations. You can't listen to all of them at the same time while still having a quality conversation with the one person, so you choose to kind of filter them out and only stay on kind of the one channel in this case. So when a card is in monitor mode, it's able to actually scan around and listen to the entire room and kind of give you an indication of what it looks like in the general area. So a card that's capable of monitor mode is able to look around and tell us exactly what is around us and what might be vulnerable to an attack like this. So a card like this is between $12 to $30. And another favorite of, of ours is the Panda PAU05 uh, yeah, uh, adapter. This one doesn't have quite the range we're looking for in this test, but it is kind of discreet and cool. Uh, if you're looking for an adapter that is compatible with this kind of attack, it needs to feature both of these uh, features, packet injection and um, wireless monitor mode. So be sure to check out our guide on which ones actually meet this requirement. And we also have a follow-up guide that is actually a, a test uh, where we record the results of using these things and kind of give you an indication of which ones might kind of meet your needs depending on what it is you're trying to do. So. In order to understand how this attack works, we need to understand a little bit about the way WPA and WPA2 work. Those are currently the best we have in terms of encryption for wireless networks. But if we use a weak password, I'll demonstrate how that can allow an attacker to break into your network. So a wireless communication has two different components. The access point, which provides the wireless network, like a router, and then the client, like a laptop, a cell phone, or another device that uses Wi-Fi to access the internet. Now, in order to begin connecting, these two have to exchange a hashed version of the shared key in order to authenticate and make sure that this computer, this host, is able to connect to this AP. Actually, we'll call this a client. So any client, be it a cell phone, laptop, a Roku, a streaming device, a home media device, Internet of Things device, will connect to the access point. And any time that it's disconnected, it'll have to share this key again. So that's a problem, because if we are waiting right here, if we are in range of this wireless network, we can simply, if we have one of these wireless network adapters that's capable of it, send a signal to the access point and the client where the access point thinks it's the client sending a message and the client thinks it's the access point, access point sending a message and what we say is disconnect. So with that simple instruction, we break this connection. They have to reconnect in order to continue doing whatever it is the user is doing with the internet. And as a result, by sitting right here, we can listen in and capture the key. Now, once we have the handshake is what it's called, we're able to, at that point, leave. We don't need to be here anymore. We don't need to be in range because as soon as we guess the password against that key, then we know that we've gotten it. So the interesting thing is using your computer's CPU and GPU, you are able to actually speed up the process of guessing so quickly that if you have a high quality list of passwords, usually stolen passwords like the RockU password list, which we'll get into later, Lists like this allow a computer to guess so quickly that if a password is weak or if a lot of people have used it, if it's like password or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or something else that's not a very good password, then you'll be able to crack it in a matter of minutes or possibly seconds. So again, this is up to the user. If the person here who set up the access point 
sets it for something that's very, very secure, then this kind of attack is just not going to work because you would need a very complicated system in order to guess what this is uh, and a lot of processing power to churn through enough wrong guesses to eventually get to the right one. In this case, if we have a bad password, it's more efficient to run this kind of attack. So today I'll be demonstrating how you can do that in a matter of seconds and the way that it's really, really important that you change the password because it can just take anywhere between 7 and 20 seconds to break into a network with one that's not secured correctly. So let's dive into that now. In order to do this, we'll need a Linux distribution. So in this case, we're going to be using Parrot Security OS. Parrot Security OS is like Kali Linux in that it's an offensive Linux distribution designed for penetration testing. However, it feels more like a desktop environment than Kali Linux does. So in general, if you're looking to do something more than just attack networks, it'll allow you to maybe have a laptop or a dedicated device that's actually specifically for doing this and maybe not have to jump back and forth as much as you would with something that's more specifically kind of for hacking. So you can get Parrot Security OS from their website and you can also download a lighter version of it called Parrot uh, Air Parrot. Parrot Air? Parrot Air. And Parrot Air is great because it's smaller and it mostly includes the tools that are specific for wireless attacks. So for this uh, tutorial in particular, you don't need to download the whole version. If you want to just mess around with wireless networks, in general, you can get away with downloading Parrot Air. So you're going to need a virtual machine in order to do this. I'm using VirtualBox. And VirtualBox is fine because it's free and anyone can get started on it very quickly. So in order to run this, you'll download the image of uh, Parrot Security OS and you'll boot it in VirtualBox to create this wonderful virtual system. And that will give you the ability to run the attack that we'll be studying today, which is the Airgeddon framework. So Airgeddon is developed by a developer called Visitor, and he decided to create something that is a wireless attack framework that allows you to automatically attack wireless networks like Wi-Fi networks, uh, taking advantage of the various flaws that modern WPA and WPA2 systems have. So that's a big deal because most people rely on WPA and WPA2 for security. So in order to test this out, let's go to Applications, Wireless Testing, and then 802.11 Wireless Tools, and we'll see the spooky alien logo, which lets us know that is Ergeddon. And as it runs, we'll see this scary, spooky spaceship by Visitor. And it'll very quickly check to see if we have the scripts that we need in order for it to run. And if not, then if you're in Kali Linux, you might notice several of these uh, are not present or not found. But you can either try to install them yourself or you can just run Parrot in which you can see everything is included by default so we can just breeze through this step. So now you'll notice that my wireless network adapter is not included. So if you're running a virtual machine, especially VirtualBox, you'll need to go to Devices, USB, and then select the correct device. In this case, the Atheros is the chipset on the TP link that we'll be using today. And since it doesn't appear now, we'll just press Enter. It'll rescan and boom, we have number two, WLAN two. So after we select that, we'll need to put this into monitor mode, which is option two, and that'll give us the ability to scan for targets. So as soon as this is in monitor mode, we're going to scan the immediate area and come up with a list of targets for us to attack based on which ones actually have people connected to the network. So this falls under option number five, which is handshake tools menu. And we will put the, uh, actually, no, we already did monitor mode, so we'll go to explore for targets, which is option four, which will op open a window and give us a list of all the available wireless networks in the area. So we should pay particular attention to the data column, because that will be uh, where we see people actually using these networks. It'll be evidence of people downloading stuff or streaming things, and that'll mean that there's somebody attached to the network, and this is a good network for us to attack. And we should leave this running in general for about 20 to 30 seconds in order to generate a good representation of you know, what's in the area. And also so we don't miss anything that might be broadcasting packets a little bit less frequently. So at this point, we've let it run for about 30 seconds and we have a number of candidates. So by pr pressing Control C, Airgeddon will give us a list of all the different uh, networks that have people connected. In this case, we only have one, which is our test network. So we'll select option three to take all the information from it and put it into our attack formula. So at this point, we've copied the BSSID, the channel, the ESSID, and the type of encryption. And we're going to, at this point, move on to option number five, which is capture the handshake. 
So we have three different options, three different attacks, and different ones will work differently on different networks. I generally recommend starting at one and just going right through because one tends to work the most frequently against the most networks. So we're going to attempt this, which will use our wireless network card to send out deauthentication packets, which will attempt to temporarily kick off any clients that are connected to this network. Now, this is one of the points I should note. If you do not have permission to do this against the network, this is the point where you would cross the line to doing something illegal. So as soon as you start kicking people off their network, you're, you're actually committing a denial of service attack, even though it is a very small one. So it's important to note that these techniques are powerful and should not be used against basically any network you don't have permission to use. So with permission to use this network, we will select option one. And by pressing enter, you'll see an attack window open on the left side and we'll look for a WPA handshake. Boom, right there. So that took us six seconds. We'll press Y for yes when it asks us if we got the handshake. And congratulations, we got the handshake. We'll now save it to our special file. So in order to get that, I'll just copy the file in there to get the uh, file path. And in this case, I'm going to name it one o'clock demo dot cap. Boom, saved it. And there we go. So I've already demonstrated at this point, we can go home. There's no reason for us to stick around and be conspicuous. We can actually take this, go home, connect it to our supercomputer or better gaming computer and utilize its GPU in order to actually crack this password very, very quickly. Now, the key to that is having a good password list. And you might've noticed the Rock U password list here, but because it's so large, I'm going to use a condensed password list that only has a couple thousand in order to demonstrate how quickly you can turn through you know, thousands of passwords in order to guess a relatively weak one. So now let's change menus and go to number seven to go to the main menu and then select option six for the offline WPA slash WPA2 decrypt menu. So once we're in this tool, we'll select option one to begin an aircrack NG dictionary attack. We'll automatically have selected the capture that we just had, but if we wanted to get a different one, we could just drag and drop it after pressing N in order to select a new one. So we're going to uh, confirm the BSS ID, and then we're going to enter the path of a dictionary file. Now I'm going to use goodguess.txt, which is a password file that has a couple thousand passwords in it, but you can use one that you find. Uh, I particularly recommend the Rock U one to begin with. So as soon as I press enter, it's going to launch a window that's going to begin to attempt to crack the password by trying a whole bunch of stuff against it. So what the hope is, is by running this very, very quickly, it'll only take us a couple seconds to understand whether this is a weak password or if it's really going to take a lot of work to make this happen. So let's go ahead and run this and we'll see how quickly we can get to the network password the network password. Here we go. That took two seconds. So we went through 1,320 keys in two seconds and we were able to get this weak password. So the password sucks, but I've seen a lot worse passwords actually in the field. So this is an example of how setting a weak password can make it, what was it? Two seconds here, six seconds there. Uh, in under 10 seconds, somebody with a basic, this is a MacBook Air, and a wireless network adapter that costs $16, $12 can do this to your network if you don't have a secure password. So the takeaway from all of this is that WPA is exactly as good as your password is. We went and took basically a wireless network adapter like this one, a virtual machine, and we were able to crack a password in a very short amount of time. So Arageddon is an amazing tool. It's a framework to audit a whole bunch of different vulnerabilities in WPA, WEP, and other types of wireless encryption schemes. But WPA is the best, and it's still vulnerable, provided the people behind it make poor decisions when setting the password. So it's important for us to note at this point that if you're going to be using this, a lot of the tools in Ergeddon are not legal to use against networks that are not yours. So if you don't legally have permission to be auditing a system, if you're not going to want there to be logs in the system of you sending these DOS packets, Keep in mind, this is a very noisy attack and it does leave evidence. So if you think you're going to be sneaky, this is probably not the tool to pick. So if you're a beginner and you're just kind of getting into this, it's extremely simple to launch one of these attacks, but it's important to know that professionals who know how to look for this sort of thing can detect it very quickly and they can also determine who it was by the logs in the uh, address of the router or other devices that you might be de-authing. So 
With that being said, keep in mind that you need to update your passwords and make sure that they are secure and not reused from anywhere else. Make sure that you update both your client and your AP devices to ensure that you're not vulnerable to the crack attack that we did an article on recently. And we'll continue this series on cyber weapons and the people behind them as people are interested and hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video version of Null White. All right, thank you so much and we'll see you next time.